What's going on guys, Brian's here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's review some of the price action from the last couple days of August, 2024. Now, originally I was just going to make this a private video for some of the Quant Trading App members, but I figured why not put this out on YouTube. I was asked a question in the Quant Trading App Discord regarding some thoughts on why the market was going down. I shared them in the chat here, but I wanted to clarify some of my thoughts in a video. If you don't know what Quant Trading App is, link is in the description to the website. This video will be heavily focused on the tools offered by QTA, so if you're not interested in QTA, I wouldn't really recommend you watch the rest of this video. This is the SPY on the 15 minute time frame. It was a pretty simple week regarding a swing trade as we had a clean bounce off of the Quant Trading App buy zone. Here are some other elements of the market. We have the SPX also hit the buy zone. We had the IWM hit the weekly support level to a T. We also had a clean rejection of the VIX all at the same time as the SPY hit this level. The QQQ also had a rejection at that level here. It dipped a little bit lower. So we had 470. If we just uh, expand this, this was the one that was a little bit messier of the bunch. But we did have a bounce initially of the zone as we had a rejection of VWAP before we broke down a little bit lower. We can see a lot of volume that came in here. This could have been stop loss hunting as it might often be referred to. A little bit of panic kicked in. This is a little bit of capitulation. And then we see price ultimately reversed giving us another entry later in the week. Same thing, a lot of volume came in as price entered into this zone here, and then it held again on Friday. So lots of bounces off of the main quant trading app zones. There was also a key gamma strike of 470 and 471. So while the NASDAQ might have been the messiest of the bunch, it was actually still relatively clean, especially on Friday. We had a nice sharp rejection right off of the level. These levels come from the Quant Trading App script, by the way, so nothing on my chart is drawn in manually. I'm just going to hide this. You guys see clean chart here. This is our weekly script that is calculated at the start of the week. So from Sunday, this zone is already on our charts. It allows us to have plenty time to prepare for what we're going to do before price gets to the levels. So the SPX slash SPY had a clean bounce on top of the QTA buy zone. We also can see it on our chart as this was a demand zone from the previous week here as price bounced right off of this zone. So we can naturally just see it on our eyes. We're getting confirmation from some of the data here. We also had some confluence on the SPY's gamma exposure levels. So if I just pop this up, and let's turn on the weekly gamma exposure levels. As you guys know, if you're a long-term subscriber of this YouTube channel, I like to aggregate a weekly profile of the gamma. At the very start of the week, these are the levels that are on my charts. I share them in the QTA Discord, but any of you guys within QTA can access this information for yourself. This is the gamma exposure profile in which I'm referring to here. So at the start of the week, this is our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, expirations. It's all combined. It creates a profile for us in which we can spot the key gamma exposure levels as well as the key strikes that have a lot of open interest. Take these levels. Here's our absolute gamma strike. Here's our positive gamma strike. Here's our highest positive gamma. Here's our highest negative gamma. Here is our G flip strike. Here's our strike with the highest open interest, highest call open interest, highest put open interest. Very simple for us to see. This is where the high absolute gamma strikes are. I take this information and then I just plot it on the charts because it makes it pretty easy to share, especially for new traders within QTA that are unaware of gamma exposure. I've been sharing this in here for a while now and I've been sharing this on YouTube for probably two years now if I remember correctly. But this is just the weekly levels plotted on my Thinkorswim charts to make it easy to see with price action. So this is our key gamma strike in which I was referring to before. Five Five, five, five. We knew this at the start of the week. Same way if we turn on the QTA scripts, if we turned off the gamma levels, same strike right here. So all this confluence, if you're a trader and you're aware of this, especially within QTA, and this is shared at the start of the week, you're copying and pasting your script and price gets into this area, it essentially is your job as a trader to look for how you're going to capitalize off of this information. Are you going to buy out the money calls? Are you going to sell puts down here? Are you going to run an out the money long call butterfly? Are you going to buy shares? Are you going to take a look at some of your favorite tickers within the SPY because maybe you don't trade the SPY? Is this an opportunity for you to buy in your long-term investment portfolio? Whatever your method is within the market, this is telling you there is opportunity here as there's multiple confluences as we started by looking at multiple instruments all hitting the QTA buy zone that you are aware of three days in advance. For new QTA members, 
this type of setup right here easily pays for a couple months worth of the subscription as it is about as simple as it gets. Price hits the buy zone, there's multiple confluence, we end up getting a really nice bounce off of the level. It does not always happen this way, but whenever there are weeks when it is this simple, it makes it very easy to capitalize off of a clean trade. As this is over a 70 point bounce in the SPX within 24 hours from here to around here. I usually like to point out some of the price action leading into the day in which we're focusing on just because it brings some sort of context and awareness to the day in question. It's always important to take a look at the previous day's price action or take a look at the week as a whole to understand what's going on. On Friday in this case here, we had a little bit of a rejection at the midpoints. Price action is telling us sellers are much more aggressive than buyers at this level as we can see in these wicks if you're a micro scalper and you know how to read the tape which is the time in sales or you understand level two you can see this type of aggressive selling happening in level two but level two and time in sales is not really something that i cover on this youtube channel as i'm not that much of a micro scalper anymore i more so look for these type of moves bigger moves off of levels that are very apparent on my chart from the qta scripts and then confirmations within the gamma exposure profile. If you struggle to read the time in sales and you struggle to read level two, you can keep it simple for yourself and just pay attention to the candlesticks that form. It's not as great as a skill as understanding level two, but for the most part, especially for a newbie, this can make it pretty simple for yourself. This is a 15 minute time frame. If you're seeing these types of rejections around a key zone or a key level, it's pretty important. The same thing in like a five minute time frame. if the 15 minute is too long of a time frame for a micro scalper, you want to see these types of long tails, these wicks, you want to see quick, sharp rejections off of your key zones and levels. So earlier in the day, we're getting this rejection starting from this one right here, which happens to coincide right with the 10 a.m. Eastern time. So 10 a.m. Eastern time, 30 minutes after the market opens is a time usually of a lot of reversals, especially whenever there's some sort of catalyst or something on the news which we did have on Friday. There was something scheduled right here. It was a consumer sentiment report. So there we go, we have a catalyst. It's not a major or a super strong one, but it is enough to affect the markets. So 10 a.m. report comes out, we see a rejection. 15 to 30 minutes later, we see another rejection. Now price is closing below VWAP. These are all warning signs right here that momentum has slowed down and it is no longer in favor of the bulls who are defending the two-day anchored VWAP at this point. But if price cannot hold this two-day anchored VWAP, then we know who is taking control of the day. So below this level, beers have now taken control of the day. We're also below the low of day. So we are below the low of day. This is the low of day right here. We've now broken that level. We are below the two-day anchored VWAP. We are below the intraday VWAP. We can see the aggressive selling here. These are all early warning signs. And you can wait for the close of these 15-minute candles. Let things really settle in. For the most part, price is still within the opening range here. So at this point here, things look pretty choppy as this is the opening range. It poked above it, but it couldn't close above it. This is our first breakdown below and now we close. If you're still long from anywhere above here and you're not willing to take your stop here, that's a little bit of a risky move as this is usually where most traders are going to take their stop loss, especially if they're long and we end up getting selling down to our QTA intraday zone. This obviously is in hindsight, so nothing is moving, but there's plenty of clues. As I like to point the same type of clues out time and time again, so you guys can just spot this for the next time. Where was price in context of things? We were also at the absolute gamma strike, which was a significant strike that we are aware of at the start of the week. So I'm gonna turn these levels on, and now I'm gonna turn off the QTA level. So now we're just taking a look at gamma. This is another perspective for price action. Where is it also rejecting? Right at the absolute gamma strike. These levels act as supercharged support and resistance levels. We know it has acted as resistance all week long. As we can see, price has struggled around it. We did breach it the day before, but this was essentially just a head and shoulders here before price rejected all the way back down. Now, I am bringing up an elementary technical candlestick pattern. It's very rare that you guys hear me mention these on this type of channel, as I like to focus more so on a data, a little bit more of a quantifiable method, but I don't shy away from the fact that my foundation in trading did come from level two time and sales and candlestick patterns i don't mention them that much because there's so much information on the internet regarding them it's very simple to just pick up a book on technical patterns you don't want to live and die by them you don't want to short just because you see a head and shoulders you don't want to project what you see onto every chart this is a head and shoulders that is important because it's the context of where it formed 
on that Thursday. I think I came in at the end of the day and just shared it here. So this is what it looked like on the SPY. Same thing on the SPX. It's also in context of where did it form. This was our intraday zone here for the SPX on Thursday. Price got stuck here. It did break out, but then once it broke back within the zone, it tried to break back out. It failed right here, forming the other shoulder. So this was a rear heading shoulder or, or rear that I would mention it, I should say. Why that's important is because this ends up creating a supply zone up here. A bunch of traders, whoever was long in this area, did not get their follow through from the day before. So they're left stuck in the red price sells off, this is their opportunity now to close out this position. So if you bought here yesterday at 562 and 50 cents or so in this area here, this is 562 and 50 cents, anywhere in this area, that's your average, price now gaps up and it's coming back to your area, you're pretty much taking a no loss after holding this position in the red. Now the smarter thing to have done would have been to just stop out yesterday, which is probably what happened here. We did get some stopping out. We can see the acceleration in the way price dropped. But for anyone with a position left over, this is their second opportunity to close out that short trade. And that's what we're seeing in price action. So we have supply. So we have a supply zone as I think I ended up, uh, let's see what I have here. Let's pull this up. So this is just on the report. So the 10 a.m. report, this is also our supply zone. So just drew it out a huge zone over this whole area here because this whole area we can see was supply all week long. Price struggled to hold in that range. Rejection, rejection. It did break into it, but then selling accelerated once it broke back down below it. And now we can see the rejection right here on the SPX. Rejection, rejection, rejection. So we are in this supply zone. This is our 10 a.m. candle right here, 30 minutes after the market opens Eastern time. We can see the rejection. It is still showing us there is still aggressive sellers in this range we have confluence with our gamma exposure level confluence confluence supply supply 10 a.m news catalyst there were some other additional confluences within qta but let's just keep it moving right along and take a look at some market internals here let's pull this up make this a little bit larger zoom in here what do we have? We have the tick. So remember, this is 10 a.m. Eastern time right here. So it's in, in this in this region here. This is where the tick opens up. It opens up extended and then it drops, never really showing much strength. We have the VIX, which again, this is 10 a.m. At this point, it's at the low of day, but then it starts rising right here. What do we have? The ADD. This is 10 a.m. So the first 10, 15 minutes, the ADD is trending up, but then by 10 a.m., it's all the way down here. So the ADD is down. The tick is down by 10 a.m. The VIX at this point at 10 a.m. could be a little confusing. Let's head back to our chart. This is 10 a.m. right here. So 10 a.m., the SPY is up, but our market internals don't really look that strong. It's not back up here. The ADD is not back up here, and it doesn't always have to work out. Remember, we are just layering more context around what we're seeing in price action. There are times in which the market can break out and go higher, even if the ADD and the tick is down. You just want to establish some sort of a framework for yourself. Are those the days in which you want to be very aggressive going long when you see that there are mixed signals that are coming through from your market internals? Maybe not. On top of that, this is the ES here. This is a level or a zone in which I believe I had marked out on YouTube and addressed maybe two or three weeks ago. And I've kept the same levels up on the chart intentionally as it is the way in which I like to trade. I like to establish my main zones as this zone came from the volume profile, which was shared a while back. At this point, we have to go a little bit further back, I believe, to see it. And then let's just turn on the weekly aggregate here. Boom. I don't remember how many weeks ago in which I shared this zone as well as this point of control. It's this point of control right here from this week, which was the all time high right here before price broke back down. So this is our supply zone. This is our POC. What happens here for the past couple of weeks? Price has struggled to break through this supply. So what do we have here on Friday? This is that POC, 646. This is the same one right here, 646. Have not touched it, have not changed it. Price is rejecting right here. We have additional confluence with the QTA intraday zone, but for the most part, this is just a volume profile perspective. Rejection here, is this a good sign or is this a good area in which you want to be aggressive being long? No, I'm recording this video the following week. It's after midnight here on Tuesdays. I'm finally getting a chance to record the video. The market was closed yesterday for Labor Day. So that's why we're seeing some price action here 
after the futures market opened on Sunday. This was Monday in which the market wasn't open, but the futures market traded, and this is Tuesday. So we can disregard all that. The day in which I'm referencing in this video is right here, again, August 30th. To conclude, let's analyze the SPX and some gamma exposure, as I think that was also asked in the question regarding seeing some positive gamma exposure. And I want to kind of summarize this video here. So we're not going to do the deep dive into the gamma exposure as I often will do, as well as the SPX uh, trade engine for QTA. We will just glance at the end of the day. So this is what it looked like. I recommend you check out some of the previous videos if this is your first time seeing this, in which I do a deeper analysis in this. Earlier in the day, there was a little bit of confluence as we can see the power strike and the absolute gamma strike was up here. So there was something to give reason regarding why we might think the market might be at 650. But the third act is essentially ruined as we see where the market ended up closing anyway. Let me just see what we looked like at that point in time earlier in the day here. And here we have it. So at this point in time, we have our power strike, we have our P1 strike, we also have our absolute gamma strike. A lot of things looking in favor for bulls at this point from the QTA SPX trade engine. What does our gamma exposure look like? Boom, big positive gamma exposure we know if we can clear 625 we're very likely heading to 650 as long as we hold above 625 if we can't hold above 625 where do we think we're going this is our transition zone things are pretty choppy here but we do have a high negative gamma strike here if these levels can't hold so if 605 can't hold we have 585 let's take a look at our chart what do we have we have 585 right down in this area this is essentially where the selling stopped then we have 625 right here. If this level can't hold, where does price go? Down to this level here. So these are key strikes here. This is our key support level here, but we have an attraction to 650. Now, personally, I was upset because I wanted to take this trade long to 650. I believe I shared that in the chat. I was not convinced at the time when price was selling off. I think we were discussing this. There's some traders that are a little bit more aggressive that took this bounce here. There was confluence to take this bounce early in the day. It wasn't enough for me to swing as I was looking to swing long. I wanted a lotto with another attempt to 650 on the SPX, but I'm still uncertain. At this point, this is when the SPX and the SPY was down here. So I had reasons to be uncertain because I wasn't convinced. I wasn't ready to swing at this point here to 650. And by swing, I wanted to swing a position over the weekend. I was not considering a day trade because at this point I had ruled out 650. I figured since we were all the way down here, the highest price would go would be back up to about the 625 area. And this is where I would have expected would have been the highest in which the market would have gone. But this was the last trading day of the month where things tend to happen on that close of the monthly candle. So it's not that surprising that this much damage was done. I was a little upset for my own reasons, mostly because if I were to pull this up right here, let's just close this out. I ended up not getting into the trade, even though I put a bid out. I was just a little bit too shy in terms of hitting the ass. My criteria to get long in this case here, I missed this opportunity. I actually was not aware of this. I would have gotten long in this area here. But if I miss my ideal entry in which I see a nice long wick at a key gamma strike like this, when I'm not seeing any additional confluence for sellers to really take control of price. At this point, the risk is so low going with an out the money butterfly or an out the money call that I'm willing to take the risk in an area like this. But, but since I missed this, once price reclaimed the intraday zone, I told myself if we can get back above VWAP, I want to see price reclaim VWAP in the two day anchor VWAP, I will take a trade long. I put my bid outs in this area here and I was not filled because I was a little too passive with my order. It was a broken wing butterfly for Tuesday's expiration and I was going to hold it either into the close or I was going to hold it in over the weekend, depending on how far price went. Price had this massive 15 minute candle right here. My orders was still left down here and that made me upset. I shut down the chart. I did not want to see what was going to come from there because at this point I told myself we're probably going to 650 and I did not participate in that afternoon trade at all. And this would have been a really nice win to close out the week. A couple of key takeaways, I guess you can say, 
pretty simple here. Gamma exposure was letting us know 650 and it was flashing 650 multiple times throughout the week. So that's one of the reasons in which it was a target. 625 was the level it needed to be over. Once it was over 625, we saw a little bit of participation up here at the 660 strike. So I did like that. However, this was not a profile in which it was very aggressive to be long. I like to see bigger strikes in positive gamma past the target in which I'm looking for. In other words, I don't like that 650 was the only real major target. I like to see if I'm going to target 650, I want to see maybe 660. I want to see something happen all the way up at 690. I want to see a lot of big positive gamma bars past the strike price in which I'm targeting. I want to see a decent amount of volume past where I'm targeting. In this case here, it has some decent volume, but it also had a lot of volume down to the put side too. These high volume strikes can act as support levels on the way down. So we had support at 600, there's support down here at, at 580, and then we can see from a gamma perspective, there's support down here at 585. So anywhere within this region, we would expect there to be some sort of support. But 30 minutes into the market open, I don't think there was any way to really know where we're going to go all the way down to here and then all the way back up to here within the same day. Or at least that's not something I was anticipating happening in the same day. Just going to play through the gamma exposure here. As we can see, these gamma bars growing. Now, obviously, we're getting closer to that 585. We can see this is our support has grown. However, there's still a decent amount of positive gamma up here. We can see what happened with the 625. If anything, these levels didn't really get that flat. And that's something that we might see when price sells off. We will see that the positive gamma, especially when there's not that much time left in the day, these levels will start shrinking. We didn't really see them shrinking. So that was interesting in itself. Definite support down at 565 is this is a massive positive gamma strike surrounded by a bunch of negative gamma. However, the overall net gex was still positive. So that's interesting. Continue to play right along. Now it turned negative. That's why this turned red. Continue to play, but we bounce right back into positive gamma territory. We Re reclaimed 5600. And then at this point, it's very interesting that we ended up again jumping all the way up to. Uh, 560 to close the day there's no print at the end of the day because the market is closed so that last candle didn't get cashed in qta but this is a huge candlestick within 15 minutes it's over 20 points in 15 minutes at the end of a week that's a dirty candle right there if you are a short that will ruin your entire week Hopefully you guys enjoyed this recap video, just covering a few days worth of price action with a focus on Friday. QTA is having a very rare sale occurring right now. You can head over to the Quant Trading App YouTube channel if the video is still up, if the sale is still going on by the time you're seeing this video. The promotion ends on September 7th. This is probably the largest sale that's ever occurred. And the last time there was a sale was back in 2022. So you definitely don't want to miss out on this opportunity to gain access to some of these tools that bring a lot of context around the markets. Whether you're interested in the trading view or the think or swim scripts or the gamma exposure levels or especially the SPX trade engine, there's a lot of value here for traders of all different styles, swing traders, scalpers, day traders. A major benefit is everyone within QTA is looking at the exact same levels the script plots the same thing essentially on everyone's chart. And the Discord is a place for you to ask QTA questions with like-minded traders that might be able to help you out. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below, like it, share it if you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.